Hello everyone and welcome back to Infantry Only Fire Emblem 4, the only Fire Emblem Let's Play series on YouTube where some dumbass nerd tries to think of something funny to say in this opening bit all day and can't come up with anything. Last time we took care of one of the least interesting chapters in the entire game, and this time we've got one that's a bit more involved. And by a bit more involved, I mean actually kind of challenging and tricky to get a hold of. We're going to have to deal with the Thrasian Dragon Knights and also making sure Hanalo doesn't die, and those are two things that are easier said than done, even if we had access to our full army. But don't worry, I have a foolproof plan for all of our problems. Before we get into that, we have a fuck ton of promotions to go over. The Sword Twins have promoted into their full potential, giving Larce a much needed shot of pure strength which is going to help her kill things even more efficiently than she was before, and Ulster is just going to get more of everything that he wants, more bulk, more strength, etc, etc. Yohalvir promotes into Warrior, granting him access to the Brave Bow, which is really big for him, as with the bow equipped, a cost, or sorry, charge as it is now called, is going to activate a hell of a lot. And then also we'll have Tinny promoting into a Battle Mage, or whatever the fuck the class name is, a worse version of Sage that tries to use swords, even though I don't think anyone that gets this class is particularly capable of using swords. After her, we also have the promotion of Julia, and my Julia is really speed-blessed. Like, holy shit, she is zooming. And we technically can actually promote Seleph this chapter, but it's largely pointless to do so, as he can dismount but he loses his promotion gains when he dismounts, so it's completely pointless to do so. And the only ones that have not yet promoted are Patty and Faval. Who, well, Faval doesn't need it, and Patty, well, she actually really, really does, but what can you do? It's not like she's able to kill things very much. Unlike most chapters that decide to hold off a minute before they fire bullshit at us, this chapter is right out the gate with a huge problem. Hannibal and his forces are smack dab in front of us. Now, he won't move until later events happen in the game, but we kind of got to blast through him, because the castle behind his, we need to seize in order to rescue Hannibal's adopted son. But in order to do that, we can't kill Hannibal, who's really powerful and right smack dab in the middle of us. So we need to get around Hannibal in order to get through him. So how do we pull that off? Very easy. We tell Hannibal to take a nap. Now, since I'm an idiot and forgot to move the sleep edge off Patty, I need to rely on Patty hitting Hannibal and then activating the sleep edge, which, with Hannibal's resistance, is about a 1 in 4 chance. Thankfully, Fire Emblem 4 lets us reset, so we're just going to keep doing that until old Hannibal takes a nap. With Hannibal asleep, we still have to make haste and get to that western castle very quickly. Normally, Seleph would be promoted by now, so you can just ride a horse on over there. Uh, unfortunately, we can't promote Seleph. So, how do we fix this problem? Very easy. We take the leg ring from Arthur, and we put it onto Seleph. We'll still be cutting it really close, but that should get Seleph over there fast enough in order to recruit Hannibal's son, Corporal. And then from there, we need to get Corporal back to the east to talk to Hannibal, and then both of them will be recruited into our army. It's still pretty tricky, but it's definitely manageable. Before we go any farther, let's travel back in time to the beginning of this chapter to the other thing that happens as soon as the chapter starts. Altena and her horde of Dragonites assaulting our home castle. Now, what you have to do is talk to her with Leaf and they'll make her go away. So we need to keep Leaf guarding the home castle and when he has cleared up enough Dragonites, he'll just walk out and talk to her. We also keep Arthur in the home base because we want to be able to help clear out those Dragonites for Leaf. And also, Arthur, without the leg ring, can't really keep up with the rest of the army, and he's going to be needed on that home castle for a lot more than just Altena. Once Leaf talks to Altena, she returns to the south and speaks to Travant about her true heritage, because apparently looking into Leaf's eyes, I don't know, allowed her to see the truth about everything. Just fantasy world stuff, it's fluffy, deal with it. Afterwards, Travant entrusts the will of Thrasia to his son, and then flies out to get himself killed in glorious combat. Now, he is very, very deadly and powerful, and he'll usually start going to wherever your units happen to be. I don't know if there's a set path to Travant, sometimes I've had him go up and assault my home castle, sometimes I haven't. 
but in this particular playthrough, he's running west, which is roughly at the time we're getting Corporal over to Hannibal. So be prepared for a big dragon fight. Travant is packing a huge punch. He has very good base stats, uh, pursuit, vantage, and a power ring just for an extra bit of fuck you. He's capable of tearing through pretty much anyone in a one-on-one -on -one fight, and his authority stars means he's going to be buffing the units around him as well. So, in order to deal with Travant, I decide to put him to sleep. Not with Patty though. Corporal has my sleep staff, because I intended to pass it down to Lana. I fucked up. But now Corporal puts Travant to sleep, which makes him very easy to kill. So that's a one strategy for you. If you ever have a problem in Jodrol, just put it to sleep. And once Travant takes a nap, the rest of his units fall down fairly easily, with the exception of one lone Wyvern Knight, who managed to be the only one that I couldn't kill and I accidentally left Corporal in a prime position to get attacked. So, as expected, that knight flies right on over to Corporal, and with a 50% hit chance, misses. What? Not everything has to go horribly awry, just most things. Once all of that is squared away, we're still not done yet. A huge horde of cavalry comes from the north, intending to sweep us down while we're weakened from Travant's forces. Thankfully, they all come down a two-square ride road, so it's very easy to set up some defenses to take care of them. I take the ever-reliable Shannon and Ulster. And, thankfully, we can manipulate FE4's kind of intelligent, question mark, AI to our advantage. The Axe Knights that lead the charge aren't going to attack Shannon or Ulster because their hit chances are way too low. So they just stand in front of them, which means we aren't in danger of being hit by anything. Except the boss, which takes a quick ride on the mountains and targets Ulster with an attack that could kill him. And of course, Ulster dodges. Look, I'm getting a little lucky here, I know, but, but let me have this, okay? After that's done, it's time for the fucketry down south. It's a bunch of ballistas and a dude with long-range magic, all ready to make it really annoying to go up and attack them. But ballistas in this game really aren't the most accurate thing in the world, so it's not too hard to go up there. I do kind of fuck up and forget to de-equip the fire sword from Selif, so he's weighed down and he gets hit by some stuff, but he's fine. Tinny's there too, but it's not like she's going to get hit by a 14%. Oh, no, okay, it's not like she's going to be hit by two 14%. It's not like she's going to get hit by three 14 percents. Okay. Once only the final castle is remaining, Arone begins a three-pronged assault, attacking three of your previously conquered castles and then leaving a fourth squad to himself to protect the final castle. This can be the only time in the entire game where your castles are really threatened. So I have Arthur, Hannibal, and Yohalvir defending them. They don't even get to Yohalvir though, but the other two are very important. Arthur with his high evasion means he won't be at much risk, and Hannibal with his high defense means he won't be at much risk. The final squadron with Arone is actually more powerful than the other three, but it's the one you're assaulting with all of your knights, so do be prepared for another very difficult battle, because unlike Travant, Arone has that goddamn holy weapon in his hands. Arone leads a squadron of roughly a fuck ton of dragon knights, and their equipment is... interesting. They're using a Slim Lance and Sleep Edge, which sounds weird, but remember, Slim weapons in this game are not what they were in later games, and those Wyvern Knights can actually pack a fairly decent punch. And the Sleep Edge is self-explanatory. They're not going to hit you very much, but if they do, you always got that fear of sleep to breathe on your back. And Aron himself is very powerful. He has the gun gear, or however the hell you pronounce it, and he is going to tear through just about anything that tries to fight him. Again, even Shannon has trouble with him. So the only solution I could think of was to put him to sleep, because I gave Corporal the funds to fix the sleep staff. Yeah, I did the same exact thing for all three major problems in this fight. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Arone's defeat signals the end of the chapter, as you can very easily just walk up and seize the final castle once he goes down. However, I do waste a bunch of time. See, all the dragon knights that assault the castles have javelins, so Arthur's no problem, but Hannibal doesn't have a ranged weapon, so they just kind of don't do anything to him. So I move Patty on over to just kill off all the dragon knights by herself, which takes about as long as you think it does. This is because I really want her to get to level 20 so that she can promote next chapter and I can put the Pursuit Ring on anyone else that might need it more than her. 
Also, I gravely underestimated how much having Arden's blood in her slowed her down. Her speed is not the best, and she really needs that promotion. Now that we're at the end of the chapter, I think it's time to go over our two new additions, Corporal and Hannibal. Corporal is a priest. Not a high priest like Hit Claude, a priest who joins at the exact same time relative to scale that Claude did in the last generation. And remember, he was a high priest. Corporal's just a priest, a level 1 priest at that. Granted, staff abusing is very easy in Fire Emblem 4, so if there ever was a game to have an underleveled staff unit to grind up, this would be the one, but he's a level 1 priest. We'll be using him, and it's not like he'll be useless, but it's definitely a bit of an uphill battle. Meanwhile, his father is a very solid unit out the gate. Hannibal's stats are very good for a general, and he'll be able to tank super well. And since we're forced to use him, his movement problem isn't as bad for us as it would normally be. His one problem is a lack of pursuit, but he does have access to the Brave Lance, which no other unit we can use does, and he does have Adepts, which can proc, if we're lucky, a fair amount of times. He also has the ability to proc Pavice, which I am more than happy about. The influx of mages come next chapter is going to be a little spooky for him, but he should still be able to hold his own regardless. And plus, look at that fucking beard and tell me he isn't a real G. Thank you guys so much for watching yet another trek through Infantry Only Fire Emblem 4. It's again a huge blast to make this series, and we're almost done. We've only got two more episodes with the last two chapters. It's getting a little bittersweet. I mean, every time I've ended an LP, it's been bittersweet. Except the Iron Man of every six, that was just bitter. But I really appreciate all the response this has gotten. This has been a super fun Let's Play to do, and I'm already antsy to start my next one, which is another fun idea you guys might like. But one thing at a time. And the next thing we have to deal with is fucking Julius. Ah, shit.